and welcome to the Super Coo Club! Hooray! I'm Andrew, the author of The Real Pigeons books. Hi, I'm Ben Wood, I'm the illustrator of Real Pigeons. We've got an awesome episode of the Super Coo Club coming up for you today. We are going to be looking at funny stories and how to make stories humorous to make your reader laugh their head off. And um, later on, I'm going to be drawing a real pigeon. Today, we're going to be drawing Tumblr Pigeon. I can't wait. She's so fun to draw. And I've got a special real pigeons challenge, a writing challenge this week. And uh, it can be hard to write a funny story, but we've got a challenge that will make it a little bit easier for you. But first of all, I thought, Ben, it might be an idea to show everyone what our weapon of choice is when it comes to writing stories and illustrating them. What's the thing that you use most at home? Is there something when you're creating a story that you just can't work without? I have lots of notebooks, but I'll also just grab whatever scrap of paper is lying around to like, write my ideas down on. So I was looking through the um, the Real Pigeons archives, Ben, which as you know is just a shoebox <laughs> under my bed. Yeah. Uh, and I found this. This is, a, um, this is a receipt for a hotel that I stayed at for one night once upon a time. Um, and on the other side of it is where I've made the entire like first plan for Real Pigeon Splash Back, the, uh, the fourth oh, book wow. in the series. So that's yeah. the plan, and this is what the book ends up looking like. How about you? Do you have like a better paper that you try to work off than what I work off? Um, well, it's not too much better than um, scrap paper. I actually use little notebooks. Um, I have lots on the go at the same time. I usually write um, all my ideas in just black, black pen. Um, here's a great example from Pet, uh, Real Pigeons Peck Punches. It's just got ideas for the, the title pages and I just do notes over and over and over again. Um, and then in this one, this, is, um, this, this notebook's actually reserved for nicer finished pieces like this, like um, pigeons being silly. So that's how uh, we write and illustrate at the very beginning of the process. But Ben, can you show us how to draw an actual character? Because it's time for How to Draw a Real Pigeon! Hooray! And this week, Ben, who are we going to be learning how to draw? We are going to learn how to draw Tumblr Pigeon! She's my favourite to draw. Uh, she's just made up of circles and loopy lines. So get your piece of paper ready, get some pencils. And Andrew, are you ready to draw along? Ready to go. Awesome. Okay, so first what you need to do is draw her eyes. So here we go. One, two, some big circles for her eyes. Then we need to join them together like that with a little hill. Now Tumblr's always doing somersaults, so her eyes are always going in different directions. We need to draw a white jelly bean under her eye. So we need to give her a nice big smile. Whee! She needs eyelashes. Tumblr has two eyelashes. Her neck is made like a water slide. Her body is a circle. She's also got lots of little swirly feathers. So I'm going to put a swirly feather on the front of her body like that. Tumblr's really flexible. She can change into lots of different types of shapes, but we're just going to give her nice um, big wing, wings today. Uh, for her legs, uh, they're going to be nice and bendy because she's a um, bendy pigeon. Now each foot has four toes. One, two, three, four. There we go. There's Tumblr's legs. One more thing. What does she need? She needs a tail. I just draw a loopy tail. One. Oh, it's going to go behind the leg. Like that. There we go. There's Tumblr. I might even add some feathers. Ta-da! Andrew, how did you go with your Tumblr drawing? Uh, this is how I went. Not, not bad, I think. Yeah, she's a little wonkier than yours, but that's probably good, right? <laughs> <laughs> Tumblr is very, very wonky. Um, I think you've done a good job. Thanks. So I hope you had fun drawing Tumblr. Um, I'm very happy with this Tumblr. Give yourselves a big clap. Awesome work, everybody.
Ben, I would say that one of the reasons that we love working on real pigeon stories is that they keep us laughing pretty much the whole time, right? What, what are some of your favorite funny moments from the books? I really love um, whenever one of the pigeons imagines something. Um, here's a good example in um, Real Pigeons uh, Nest Hard. Um, Rock imagines all the pigeons with teeth. Uh, they've got big grinners. They're like so. It looks so gross and silly. It's so weird, and um, I just love that anything can happen when they're imagining. The other scene I really like. There's a giant chip that someone has created. A giant hot chip, and it comes sliding down a hill, and it's going to run into um, a city called Chipopolis. And I think it's just really funny because there's giant food and it's <laughs> a bit dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So does the town of Chipopolis have insurance guarding against <laughs> natural disasters such as giant chips? Giant chips. <laughs> <laughs> and and there are also like really small things in the books that make me laugh as well. Like I um there's a an, a, a villain in book number five in Real Pigeons Peck Punches, and she's afraid of birds and she's scared of birds, and she hates birds, and her name uh, is Bertie Bird Bird. <laughs> but I, what you just said about the hot chip, especially the giant hot chip, Ben, is just so silly. And yeah. silly things are like a shortcut to like stories being funny. Because people ask me sometimes, how do you write funny stories? And it can be quite daunting thinking that you have to sit down and just kind of write something that's funny, like a joke straight away onto a piece of paper. But And there's a game that we play sometimes where we try to like extract silliness from like everyday things around us. Uh, so maybe we'll give it a go on video, Ben. Yeah, let's do it. I think it'll be fun. And the game involves us writing down a question which you have to explain the answer to in a silly way. So for example, Ben, ask me a question. Okay. Um, why do some men grow mustaches? Why do some men grow mustaches? The answer is that they grow them because men like that are broom factories. They grow their moustaches, they cut them off, they <laughs> attach sticks to them, and there you have it, a uh, small but quite handy broom. So the pigeons could use them, because <laughs> they'd be the perfect size for Oh pigeons. yeah, or cats or dogs. Yeah, maybe it's brooms for yeah. small animals. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I've got a question I've got written down for you. What causes rainbows to happen in the sky? <laughs> okay, uh, pigeons eat lots of candy and lollies that they find on the ground and they eat so much of it that they uh, get sick and vomit all down in the sky so because it's such a powerful spew oh. of lollies and candy it goes through the sky in a beautiful colored rainbow that is <laughs> revolting yeah <laughs> i love it next question for you all right this one's a hard one okay who invented the dressing gown? Who invented the dressing gown? The dressing gown was invented by a <laughs> man called Frederick Gown, who did not have a private room in which to get dressed. So he created and invented the dressing gown so that he could always put it over whatever he was wearing and change his outfit underneath without anybody uh, else seeing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That, that's a weird explanation, but I think it's good. <laughs> Why do hot dogs come in buns? Because hot dogs are actually cold and they need something nice and warm to be snug in. So they get a nice bun and wrap it around them like a coat. And that's why they're called hot dogs. Oh, it's so clear now. I can't believe I didn't know that. Yeah. Ben and I love hearing from you uh, and answering your questions. And it's time for this week's Read a Question. Yay! Hi, my name is Tilly. And I'm wondering if it's really, really hard to do the same character over and over again. Bye for now. Um, it is sometimes. I, I have to learn how to draw a character. I, first, I have to design the character. But then I actually have to teach myself how to draw that character, doing different things. Um, so it can be tricky. In um, Real Pigeons uh, Nest Hard, it was extremely difficult to uh, teach myself how to draw a character um, that I've designed. Beardy Vulture, um, he's a really tricky character to draw. Um, so I had to be really careful 
um, with how I do his wings. He's, he's big, he's got lots of joints. It's just with everything I draw, I have to, I have to do lots of practice to, to teach myself. And if any Real Pigeons readers out there have a question that they'd like to ask uh, Ben or myself, you can film yourself asking the question and send it in to us and we'll answer it right here on the Super Coo Club. This week, the Real Pigeons Challenge is a writing challenge. Uh, and we've been talking about funny stories and how to be funny and talked about being silly a lot because Ben and I are so silly when we create Real Pigeon stories. And being silly is a great way to make your story funny. So the challenge this week is for you to write a story about a day in your life. I want you to write a story that is about what happens when you wake up, what happens in the middle of your day, what happens at the end of your day, but there's one twist. What happens if you wake up in the morning and you're not yourself, but you've turned into an elephant? Oh dear, an elephant. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, you can write this story, you can even draw yourself as an elephant as well, that's an extra challenge. But to help you with some ideas about how you could write about yourself if you woke up and you were an elephant, Ben and I are going to very quickly do a little bit of a storytelling exercise. We're going to try to do this. And Ben, you're already drawing an elephant. Yeah, I just started. Is that, is that me as an elephant? <laughs> yeah, you've got one really big ear and one little ear. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I'm in my I'm in my pajamas because oh. I've just woken up, and my pajamas uh, are covered in cats. <laughs> okay, that's true. My I actually have cat pajamas. <laughs> All right, oh, um, they kind of look like mega bat, but it'll do. So, if I'm going to write a story about myself, and I wake up in the morning and I'm an elephant, I have to make a decision: Is this going to be a story where I try to pretend like I'm not an elephant and get by doing the normal things of the day, or is it a story where I wake up and I'm an elephant and I need to try to transform back into a human being. I think that's the story that I would write. So in order to do that, Ben, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to be an elephant and I can't get out of my house without destroying every single doorway because an elephant is so big. So instead, I'm going to leap up through the roof of my house, I think, in my story. I'll leap out through the, the roof and maybe some birds will help lower me oh, to the yeah. ground. Okay, I'll draw some birds. Uh, I'll draw some birds up there, yeah. Uh, and what would happen next in my story? I think what would happen next in my ridiculous elephant story is that I would need to go somewhere where someone can help me transform. Uh, and the place where I'd go is probably the zoo because there are elephants at the zoo. Probably the, the elephant keepers know all about elephants, know what to do in a situation like this. Uh, so I'd maybe catch the bus to the zoo because I think a bus would be able to hold my weight. So I'd probably get onto the top of the bus and, oh, nice, draw, drawing a bus, excellent. So yeah, I jump onto a bus and oh, I head yeah. to the zoo. And my story would kind of go from there. And that's the great thing about this exercise, Ben, is that you can start writing about what would happen if you woke up as an elephant one day. And it can be very silly. And then suddenly you get all these other ideas for the different things that could happen in your story over the course of this day. Like, um, uh, this that's why I like this writing challenge. Like eat, um, this elephant's now eating an ice cream. Of course. And it's I melting, it's it's melting all over the bus. <laughs> uh, I hope it doesn't get on the front windscreen. That could cause an accident. Oh, no! That dangerous a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's the story that uh, we've just started telling. But now the challenge is over to you, everyone. Good luck. Uh, share your story that you come up with about you and the day uh, that you woke up as an elephant. Share it on social media. Uh, and use the hashtag RealPigeonsChallenge so that we can check in and look at the stories that you've written. They don't have to be very long, by the way. Uh, they can be quite short. Your day might end quite quickly if you're an elephant, depending on what happens in the story. Uh, but yes, share the hashtag. And Ben and I are going to choose one entry and we're going to award a special prize, a copy of Real Pigeons Peck Punches to one person that shares their story yeah. online. That's the Real Pigeons Challenge. Great elephant, Ben. Top Thank work. Thank you. <laughs> we're going to be back for another episode of the Super Coo Club next week in which we will be investigating... Hunger, Ooh. and the role that hunger plays in stories. Hunger for food, but hunger for other things as well. That sounds delicious. Yum, yum, yum. Oh, yeah. You're going to love next week's episode, Ben. I will. <laughs> ben loves food. Any yeah. opportunity. <laughs> Make sure you named the theme hunger for next week, right? <laughs> All, All right. right. Until then, everyone, take care and good luck with your writing. Bye. Bye.